Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Julie here from Story A Day, and I'm back with you this week to take a look back at the year 2023, some of the triumphs that people in the community have had. I obviously don't know all of what all of you have been up to. I do have a more close relationship with the Story A Day Superstars, which is our group that meets. Uh, we meet monthly, we meet daily to do writing sprints, we have workshops and all that kind of stuff throughout the year, special events, things like that. And they keep me up to date on what they're up to and what's working for them and what's going well. So I'm just going to share some of that today. And I really encourage you to come over to the site. You can come to this episode, which is storyaday.org forward slash episode 301. And I'd love it if you would leave me a comment there about what you have achieved this year, whether it's a publishing success or a writing success or a mindset success. I'm going to talk more next week on the podcast about some of the other kinds of triumphs that people in this community have experienced. So I would love it if you'd come over and, and leave a comment about that. Obviously, if you got published this year, come and leave a comment about that. Leave a link if you published something yourself that you think people is worth, people might want to read. If you published uh, something through another organization, come and leave a link to where we can find it. I'm going to put in the show notes and on that blog post a list of things that were published by Story Day Superstars this year. It's an incomplete list, I think. So also Superstars, if you're listening, come and leave links for your other successes that I didn't capture from our, our Slack workspace. If there's anything I've missed, please let me know. But so here are some of the things that people have achieved this year in terms of publishing success. Now, I don't always encourage people to just think about publishing as the, the only means of measuring their success, but it's a pretty nice one. So let's celebrate the people who actually took time to summon all of their courage, do all of the work, go back and forth with editors on rewrites that were sometimes painful and actually made it across that final finish line, which is hard to do with all of the hurdles on the track. And I'm, but first of all, I'm going to start with those ones that have reached that point. And then I'm going to talk a little bit more about some of the kinds of, of things that we're also celebrating. And I'll invite you to leave comments and I'll revisit those ones next week. So here's an incomplete list of some of the places that Story A Day Superstars have been published this year in the rumpus. Mary Rose had an essay published about the experience of being an adoptee, and that one was called The Mothership. Laura Porter had a flash fiction piece published called Elixir, and I didn't write down the title of the place where it was published. Apologies about that. I'll put the, I'll put the information on the blog post. Monique Cuerrier had a piece in one of the Bikes in Space anthologies. Then Astrid Egger was published in The Sad Goose Collective, issue two. And in Blink Inc. issue 51, Marta Pelreen Bacon has a story called A Boat, A Bike, A Balloon, or What It Takes to Return a Stolen Sun in one of the other Bikes in Space anthologies that's upcoming. Peyton Ellis had a story that took a while to find its home, that really finally found its home in Pilgrimage magazine. It was called Bones in the Road, and I know we were all proud of Peyton's perseverance in keeping that story, which was a really special story for them to finally find its home. So that was a happy day for everyone when we heard that that had found its home. One of our newer members, Walter Lawn, had an essay about 9-11 published in Hartwood Literary Press called Naming the Dead, which was an incredibly touching piece. Astrid again, Astrid Egger, got another story published called The Unguarded Moment in Active Muse. Neha Medarata released a collection of short stories for city lovers called Death Chips and Love Fries. Robin Stein, Make a Wish, published in Fiddlehead Folio. Monique Cuerrier's Story from Nothing was in the sci-fi queer anthology Rise. Fallon Brown released two romance books this year, Fixing the Books and the Garage Fridge Situation, both of which are part of a very fun series. Niha, again, Niha Medrata got a, a Reader's Choice Award from Short Fiction Break for The Warrior, Defying Time and Space, and was long listed in the Wingword Poetry Prize for The Painter Must Be Going Nowhere, 
And Kim Youngkin got an honourable mention in the NYC Midnight Short Story Contest for a story there. Those are just some of the, the triumphs that people have had on a publishing front this year in, from the Story A Day Superstars group. I'd love to hear from you what you've been up to. Have you been sending stories out into the world? Some of the other things that the superstars were celebrating were things like having the courage to actually press submit on a story. That got a huge cheer from the whole community because it's, that's one of those things that's really, it's really hard to do. We all want people to read our stories, but on the other hand, it's terrifying the idea of having people read our stories. The fact that somebody came into the group and just posted, I hit submit and I am thrilled that I had the courage to do it and got this stream of responses from people saying, good for you, that's so amazing, well done. People also celebrated when they got rejections. There, was, there were a couple that got requests for rewrites and the author worked really hard on the rewrites. That they were a, It was a real learning experience for them. And ultimately, the story ended up not getting accepted. But each of them, the people I'm thinking of who said, who commented on that and who got A, support from the community to help them with those rewrites and B, got a huge amount of support throughout the process and, and when they were freaking out about it was taking so long and which we all do, they got so much support around that. And then, of course, finally, when it came back that the submission had not been ultimately accepted, there's an outpouring of love from the community. But both of those writers said they learned so much by going through that process and ultimately feel like the story was stronger for having made the changes. And they, as writers, are stronger because they now know what it's like to do that hard work. We all should be doing that hard work. Sometimes it's easier to do that when you have the 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 carrot dangling in front of you of maybe they've maybe they're really going to accept this thing. So being forced to do those rewrites with the with the potential prize of publication can sometimes make it easier to do the hard work of doing the rewrites. So if you're struggling with rewrites and wondering why you're finding it hard to do them, remember it is just hard to make ourselves do work on spec. And it's still hard when you have the, potent, the possibility of publication at the end of it. But it's, it's just one of those deadlines. You just, can't, you just can't stop at that point. You just have to keep going forward. Or, or at least you could stop and just not do the revisions. But these writers in the community did not stop. They persisted. And now they have a much stronger story and a much stronger sense of themselves as someone who can persist. So I have huge congratulations to those writers. Also to other writers who posted in our group that they got rejections. The other end of the, the experience, form letters without even their name on it and something things that, that had been sitting in a queue, in submittable or wherever, for quite a long time. And then you can get your hopes up when they're holding on to something for a while. And ultimately, in this one case, somebody said they had to, they had to face the fact that they were just getting a faceless form rejection and just got an outpouring of love from the community to keep them keep them going. Comments like, oh, it just means it wasn't the right home for your story. And the fact that you love your story is, is important and don't get discouraged. It's so nice to have people around in those moments. If you read yesterday's post on Story A Day from Brenda, you'll see that the support of a writing community can make all the difference between, not so much to the fact that you're a writer, but to the pace with which you pursue that writing life. If you haven't read Brenda's post yet, I'll leave a link to it in the notes because it is, it is both, it's a catalogue of catastrophes that happened, written about in such a, a brilliant, entertaining way that it was so generous. And the ultimate point of the post was that all of these things wouldn't have stopped Brenda from being a writer or from getting back to her writing, but it would have created holes in her writing practice. It would have created two weeks, two months where she was just like, you know what, I can't turn up. I, I just put the writing aside while I'm dealing with all of these things. And the fact that she had our group to show up for meant that she was able to take, even in amongst this 
cascade of things that kept going wrong, she could take an hour out of every day just to step away from life and go, you know what, I'm going to turn up for my writing. I'm going to turn up for my writing. I'm going to do a little bit. I'm going to get my energy back from doing my writing and, and keep going. So I do highly encourage you to go and read Brenda's story. Other kinds of things that people shared in our triumph, we have a, a thread in our Slack group, in the Story A Day Superstars group, which I call Triumph, which is about, you know, just helping everybody to submit anything. Somebody posted that they were finally done with the rewrites for their novel. Hooray! Somebody else posted their triumph of the week was that they had opened up a novel that they had written years ago and hadn't really looked at for a couple of years and discovered that they really liked it and they really liked their writing, which I thought was just an absolutely lovely thing to celebrate. And it gives everyone so much uh, courage and, and hope because sometimes when you're in the middle of writing something, you've no idea if it's any good. And to come back to something that you've written a couple of years later and go, I actually quite like that is very encouraging. If somebody else is experiencing that, then I might experience that too. So it's lovely to read those kinds of updates as well. Other people just posted that sometimes their triumph for the week was attending our writing sprints. Just, it doesn't seem like a lot, but when you've got a lot going on in your life, Showing up and giving yourself some dedicated time to write, whether it's in a group like this or elsewhere, it's really worth celebrating the fact that you showed up. So I have really enjoyed that kind of that kind of update as well. Something that's really nice is that people show up and they share things from outside their writing lives. Somebody shared that they got a good grade, a college student, on their essay that they'd been working on that had been interfering with their fiction writing time. But they showed up and said, yeah, I got a solid grade on my essay. And everybody was like, oh, that's so great. Somebody else uh, shared that their son had something published and were like, yeah, you know what? Our kids' wins are our wins too. Somebody else shared at the beginning of the year that they realised over the past year, they have begun to refer to themselves as a writer and their friends have begun to refer to them as a writer and they're no longer embarrassed or feel awkward about saying, you know, people say, what do you do about saying I'm a writer? And that has been something that's grown as she spent more and more time hanging out with other writers and showing up for her writing in her writing sprints and things like that. But yes, I am trying, I am extolling the virtues of having a writing community because I would dearly love to have a bunch of you join us next year in the Story A Day Superstars group. It's hard to explain the value of being in a group like this until you've experienced it. I, I always struggle with how to convince people to give us a try because I can tell you about we've got X number of writing sprints that we run every week where you can show up and just do work with other people. We've got monthly hangouts where you can show up and it's not something that's an obligation that you have to show up every time. It's like the, the kind of event that you turn up to just top up your tank. I've had a few people say to me, I'm not sure if I've got time to, to join Superstars because it seems like there's an awful lot going on. And so I want to say that the point of being in Superstars is that there, there are a lot of events and times when you can show up and be in the virtual room with other writers. And a lot of that time is spent doing your own work. So these writing sprints that I've talked about, I mean, people turn up and they do their own work. Sometimes people are reading. Sometimes people are researching things. Sometimes they're actually sitting there working away on the first draft of a new piece or revisions of an, on a piece. And we take little breaks and, and share our experiences. And if anyone's got something that they're feeling discouraged about, everyone will pitch in and give their experiences and their perspectives on that. And the same with the monthly hangouts that we have. It's an opportunity to step away from the voices in your head, which we love. Of course we do. We love the voices in our heads. They're our friends. But some of the voices in our heads are a little less supportive than we might like them to be. I'm not talking about our imaginary friends here, but the voices that kind of nag at us or tell us we're not enough. And to just spend some time every month with people who get it is incredibly affirming. And uh, it's an opportunity to get the support you need to do this difficult work of writing. 
We do workshops. My, my version of workshops is not a lecture where you listen to something and go away. Most of the workshops that I run at Story A Day have work time built into them. So you get a start on implementing the principles that we're talking about. In the past year, we've done workshops on brilliant beginnings, where people got to think about how to, the, the best ways to start stories. And we worked on them right in the workshop. We did, last year we did uh, middles. So this year we, we finished up with elegant endings, was what I called that workshop. And people got to, to bring a story they're working on, or think about a story they're working on, and actually think about how to end it elegantly in a number of different ways that we went through in the workshop. So I ran, I think, six or seven unique workshops this year in months where I wasn't running things like the Critique Week, which everybody loves, or the, the Challenge, which of course is free for all in May. So it's hard to explain to people the value of showing up for your writing, whether you come to one writing sprint, one hangout a month, or just participate in the special events like the workshops and the critique weeks. It's hard to explain the value of that until you've been doing it. But this is why I make the superstars a year-long commitment. So whenever you join, I ask that you stay for a year. Obviously, if something comes up, we, we work it out. But the idea is that you stay for a year so that you can experience what it is to turn up as a writer for yourself throughout an entire calendar year. Sometimes that means that you're not showing up for much because maybe your summers are crazy and you don't turn up for much. But you, when it comes around to autumn, you knuckle down and get that first day of school vibe again. And it's really valuable to know that you've made a commitment to superstars for a year and that you can show up when it works for you and, you're, you can, and you'll always be welcomed. And you can see what it's like to go through a whole year having made that commitment to yourself that you are a writer. And you'll probably learn what your rhythms are for the year, what your cycle is, because nobody's writing eight hours a day and nobody's writing every day of the year. Nobody's writing every week of the year. There are some of us, some people, OK, some people might write every day of the year. Some of us find that we need fallow periods. And just because you're not turning out new words doesn't mean that you're not a writer. And it's quite nice to have this group around to validate that. And we've seen in this group that life happens a lot. And people who get called away from the creative work of writing for life events, sick parents, deaths, births, house moves, kids going to college, there's a lot of things that pull us away from our writing for discrete periods because that's a sort of a focused put for a period when you need to focus on other things. The ability to turn up in a group like this and even just talk about writing and talk about reading and keep yourself on the path is really valuable. And it makes the re-entry into the creative part so much smoother. If life is pulling you away from your writing, the worst thing you can do is cut off all your ties to writing. Being in a compassionate group where people are like, yeah, I get it. It's so tough when your parents are sick or when whatever else is happening, when you've got a newborn. It's so hard to find time for that creative work, but that doesn't mean you're not a writer. And the people who are in that phase tend to be able to support the people who are in the active writing phase by showing up and talking about it. And it really supports everybody or by telling us what they're reading at the moment what they what they've what they're uh, finding out there in the world to inspire them and just watching people persevere and and show up as writers is is inspiring to everyone no matter what phase they're in like i say it's really hard to explain the value of a group like this but i'm hoping that showing you some of the publication successes this week and talking about some of the other things that get commented on in our group um when people show up and want to celebrate their successes week after week I'm hoping that will encourage you. So if you are looking for something to bind you closer to your writing in the coming year, I am opening up the Superstars group again today and I'm going to leave the registration open over this festive period and right up until we do our first hangout meeting in January, which will be on the 7th of January. So you've got a little time to think about this. But the door will be closing so that I can get people in, get them oriented, get them situated. But there is there's so much opportunity in this group 
Um, and I want to invite you in if you are serious about your writing, but not really serious about too much else. <laughs> you might be a really good fit for this group. I say we're serious, but not somber. There's no pre-qualification for joining this group. You don't have to have achieved anything in particular to join us. I named the group Superstars on a whim. And what I've discovered is it intimidates people a little bit. But the idea is that if you're showing up for your writing and committed to your writing, you're a superstar in my eyes, because so many people in the world say that they want to write and don't do it. And if, you turn, if you're showing up at all, you're a superstar. All you need is a desire to be writing, a desire to advance your craft, and a desire to really make a difference in the coming year in your life. If every year you have write more on your New Year's resolutions list, I'm going to invite you to do something different about it this year. I'm going to invite you to join us in the Superstars group and use all of the tools in there, all of the camaraderie to give yourself this year to explore what being a writer, writing more, whatever your writing goals might look like right now. Use this group and this community to work through that over the course of this year. This isn't a race. You're going to be doing this writing thing for a long time. It's in you. So if you find yourself in roughly the same place as you were this time last year, or if you want to make more progress, more, if you want a little support just in focusing your mind on the fact that your writing is this important to you, seriously encourage you to take a look at the Story Day Superstars group and to think about joining us for the next year. There's going to be lots of excitement around the 15th anniversary of the Story A Day May Challenge. Of course, you can take part in that however you want to interact with Story A Day. That's my gift to the writing community. So that will be happening. But being inside this sort of inner circle and having people to talk to about it every day is just, it's a real change in the quality of life. And I'm not just saying that, people tell me that. So anyway, there are lots of things coming in the new year. I'm going to open up some writing coaching slots and we'll be doing our critique week and all of that good stuff. And if you are in the Superstars group, you get first access to all of that stuff. Anything new that comes along, you're the first to know. But mainly this is about you and your urge to write, your identity as a writer, your need to make some forward progress on this. Because every time you get to the end of the year and you look back and you don't see the kind of progress that you wanted to see in your writing. There's a cost and it's a cost to your soul. And I, I just really want to encourage you to think about what it's going to take for you to be in a different place next year, to be further ahead and not have fallen behind. Because you won't be in this place next year. Nothing ever stays static. You will either have fallen behind and become rustier in your writing, or you will have moved forward and made progress and clarified your goals and made friends. And however you decide to do that, I hope that you'll choose the path of moving forward. If it sounds like our superstars group would be right for you, then please come over to the link in the show notes. There are about 50 of us in there now. The group will never be larger than 150 people, which keeps it at a size where everybody can know each other. Ancient villages used to break down and split off when they got to about 150 members. So that's the absolute maximum that will ever be in this group. I'd like to invite 50, 75, 100 of you to join us for this next year as we celebrate Story A Day's 15th round in May and as you celebrate this unique opportunity to be this version of yourself for the next 12 months. What's, what are you going to be like 12 months from now? Where's your writing going to be? Where's your sense of yourself going to be? I don't know. It's up to you. If superstars can help you, we would love to do so. That's it for this week. I will be back next week with some more triumphs. Do come over to the, the post for this uh, episode and let me know what your triumphs for the year are. And again, if you're interested in superstars, that link is in the show notes. If you're listening on your phone and you're not driving, why not? Click on the little I for information in your podcast app. Take a look at the show notes. Click on that link and investigate anything there that seems interesting to you. Have a great creative week. And of course, keep writing. Mm -hmm. 
Thanks for listening. Why not come over to the blog at storyaday.org and check out this week's writing prompts and articles. And in the meantime, have a great creative week. And of course, keep writing. <laughs>